So this is the receiver that I'm going to be using. It's a Spectrum AR6610T and it's got a DSM2, DSMX, uh, six channel telemetry receiver. Um, it's actually got telemetry built into it. Um, I believe it has uh, altitude and I think uh, it does battery monitoring. Um, not the smallest receiver, but it is a six channel. Spectrum doesn't make any small receivers or, or low channel receivers like this is a four channel aircraft um, but uh, they don't make a four channel flight receiver that has telemetry and such um, they make a four channel receiver that has no antennas it's antennaless and it's what they call a sport flying receiver um, they're not very expensive they're about 45 dollars this is about 80 bucks um, just fyi And I believe this is a uh, battery monitoring cable here. I'll have to read up on it. Basically just solder that uh, in line uh, with the um, power connector here. Um, what I would probably end up doing is just uh, trimming away some of the plastic covering here, the shrink wrap, and uh, solder directly to those two connections. Um, or I could... Uh, cut away a little bit of insulation and solder it in line and then uh, put on some shrink wrap or whatever. A couple of different ways to go. <clears throat> right now I'm more worried about size and placement. So, okay, that is, is it too wide for the aircraft? Well, it fits in. just fits so what I could do is put this underneath the battery I would want to face it this way put it down like here and put the battery on top now the will it fit like that as far as closing the uh, closing the hatch let's find out No, nope, that's not going to work that way. So let's consider other options. It's not going to leave me room for servos. That leaves me room. Because the servos don't take up a lot of space. Basically like that. Yeah, I think that's going to do uh, one, two, three in a row. Um, okay. Now, 
you've got a couple of different um, possibilities here for servos. And uh, using the KTS is probably your best bet because you could use this one for the KTSs. It says X08, but I think the sixes fit these also. Um, they give us uh, a block for the MKS 75Ks and for the Emax 08 a i or a ones um either way i wouldn't want to use uh, one of these inline ones because that really doesn't leave much room for receiver and battery i mean if you wanted to just use the small packs and not have the option for the 550s you could probably run them in line like this especially if you've got a very small receiver um but uh having them be side by side like this gives you an advantage in that you've got your lines coming out through these two holes here and with the uh, servos staggered where you've got the um, where you would have the uh, the arm or the wheel here and here that puts it down the side so it, in, instead of having them be like this where the the wheel or the arm would be in the center and the line would have to come out and over and uh, you want your line to pull in as straight a line as possible so that's why I want to go ahead and use uh, this block so let's just go ahead and pull a couple servos and confirm that those fit in the way that we want them to And as I mentioned before, I had bought and bought some of those wheels. Here they are. Um, I intend to use these. Uh, because it's a round pulley, it's a grooved pulley, um, as opposed to an arm, uh, as the arm moves over, it also moves away in this direction. Uh, so you're kind of losing pull whereas if you're using a wheel that uh like the apex of a turn it's always there as it rolls you're always pulling at that same position so you're going to get a much more linear uh reaction whereas with a, an arm uh the further it swings the less it pulls in the direction that we need it to and the more it starts tracking to the side so um I highly recommend getting these. And again, we would want those to be towards the wall. So we would mount one like this. And yes, these do fit. I need to shave a little material that's very tight. There we go. Like that. And then this one. Would go with the wheel out to the other side. So one here, one here. That way we're pulling here and pulling here. And that is perfect. So as long as I'm at it. I'm going to go ahead and pull out this little screwdriver and I'm going to screw these down.
I don't think I'm ever going to move that motor or do anything different with it, so I'm going to just empty this in here. Just use this box for all the spares for this plane. Now go easy on these, you don't want to strip the hole. If you do so, take out all the screws, take out both servos, and use a little CA, uh, put a drop of CA in the hole, and when it's completely dry, reassemble and put all the screws back in, and that way you'll have tightened up the hole. to hold down the arm or in our case the wheel and let me get a servo tester Having one of these is very handy. It helps you make sure that uh, things are centered and you can test and adjust. So, nice smooth action. So I turn it all the way to one side and then I press the mode to drop to center and that way it centers it over. And then I know that's exactly where position it needs to be in. Do this for the next one. Centered. It's nice that they give us spares on these. It's the kind of thing you could potentially lose.
go. It's a little off, but I can adjust that with uh, in the transmitter with programming. too far. The next spline over. Wow. Perfect, but when you're working with a servo at an angle, and these splines are only so fine, so if it's on one side or the other side, okay. So there we go, and as you can see, the cord will just run right inside there and wrap around it as it turns. The only thing that you don't have with these is the ability to adjust to like have it have a longer arm versus a shorter arm. So before I do this, um, now that our tail boom is thoroughly dry, I did use a little bit of zap on it, um, some uh, uh, kicker. I took it out back and spritzed it just to speed up the process so i would not try to remove this extra that's sticking out i would just leave that that's not going to be a problem for landings or anything it's not an aerodynamic issue um, if you try to smooth that flat it would more likely weaken the assembly so first we want to slide our boom in and they recommended one inch so I get a little ruler here Okay, that's uh, that's an inch. Now, before we can apply any glue on this, we need to make sure that we are uh, angled correctly to match our wing. So, we're going to want to bolt on our wing. Not the whole thing, just the center section. And for that, we need our two wing mounting screws. Um, I don't know what color they'll be for your kit. Uh, the instructions I saw showed chrome. These are black, it doesn't really matter either way. Get a wrench of the right size. Yep, and these are a two millimeter hex. get some uh, washers for those later. So 
So there is our wing. Now we can put on our tail pieces. So now we need to, it's going to be kind of hard to show you how to do this because of the amount of space I've got here and the angle of the camera. Um, what I'm going to be doing is lining up the wing with the tail feathers by rotating this until they are properly uh, adjusted left to right. And then I'll just put a couple of drops of CA right here and let that wick in and like i said just enough to tack it in place so then i can unbolt the wing take off the tail feathers and then glue the inner sections so okay um i've tried several different things to get it just right and the best way seems to be what i've got here um i've got a pair of these metal blocks under the leading edge of the wing on either side that makes the wing level to this surface and then lifting the tail boom to see which comes up off first and so it looks like i need to do just a hair in this direction it's hard to get it just moving just a teeny bit it wants to move in jumps So I'm now a little too far the other way. And we're talking like fractions of a degree at this point, but you know, why not try to get it perfect? And that looks like it's pretty perfect. Great. So now, remember, I don't want to get any on the wing because I don't want it to drip in there and glue the wing down. So that should hold it in place. I'm going to go ahead and leave it for a few minutes just to make sure that it's not going to move on me when I pick it up. <laughs> <laughs> 